this is a Yesu FT1. Not to be confused with this, which is also a Yesu FT1. This is a little Fusion handheld radio from my Yesu, one of the early Fusion radios. This, however, is an FT1. You'll see it's spelt O-N-E rather than the number one. And this was a radio produced by Yesu from 1982 to I think around 1986. It was the top flight HF transceiver. It's all solid state. Um, it's got general coverage receive. And it, as I say, it was the flagship, uh, flagship transceiver from Yesu in the early 1980s. So it's uh, around 40 years old now. Now this particular example I picked up recently from a radio rally. I've always liked the look of these. I'm not sure how many are still around working. This radio works. It does have a few uh, quirks, which we'll come to when we see it in the shack in operation in the next video. Uh, but for this video, I thought I'd just uh, talk you through the radio and we'll have a look at the, the various features and just what was offered at the time in what was seen as the, the, the top end of radios. Um, you'll see it's, it's covered with controls, no menu system whatsoever in, in a radio of this age. It's all buttons and knobs. So if we work from the uh, left-hand side of the radio, we've got these um, long sort of toggle switches. We've got the power switch. You can switch in a processor, a noise blanker, gain control for the uh, microphone. Uh, we've got a monitor switch and a switch which takes us between a notch filter and a peak filter, I think, for CW on the off position in the middle. We can switch the uh, automatic gain control between fast, slow and off. And we've got a scan switch here as well. And then the rotary knobs are for uh, mic gain and compression. A drive and noise blanker the uh, peak filter and the notch control, RF gain, we've got AF gain and squelch, a shift and width control here, the uh, mode switch, now you'll see this is labelled FM, AM, FSK, upper and lower sideband and three CW positions. Some of these were options, the rigs didn't come fully filtered from the factory. Uh, this radio has got um, AM and FM fitted to it, which I believe in some regions was an option in itself. As far as I know, this radio has only got one CW filter. And the AM filter, I think, is the narrower one. There was a wider option for AM. I don't think this radio is fitted with it. Um, and then we have um, the uh, delay and Kia controls here for CW. And the, at the top here, these controls govern what the meter here reads. Uh, we've got a, an S meter and ALC meter on the right here. The left hand meter can be set to various functions, uh, forward power, uh, IC, um, compression and so on. And that can all be adjusted via these two controls here. Then obviously we have the uh, main tuning knob. We have the push buttons underneath which govern really what the tuning knob does. So we've got a fine tune. We've got a megahertz button. So we uh, depress that and the set uh, tunes up then in uh, one megahertz steps. We've got a clarifier control for um, receive and um, transmit. We've got a lock button. Uh, we've then got a numerical keypad where you can actually key in frequencies and you can move the radio up and down in various steps. Okay, we have uh, VFO switches here, A and B VFOs. We've got nine uh, individual VFOs. The control to the right governs uh, what the keyboard does in relation to these uh, VFO controls. In fact, driving the rig, it's quite complex. The uh, different ways in which you can uh, change frequency. It uh, really is a read the manual job, this radio. And uh, we've got an RF attenuator control here, um, which the manual recommends you use in preference to the RF gain. 
uh, if you want to reduce the sensitivity due to noise and interference and the manual suggests uh, the first port of call should be the RF attenuator control. Uh, we've got the usual uh, round, I think, 8-pin uh, microphone socket. And we've got a headphone socket. So that's the front of the radio. Quite a lot there, as you can see. This particular example, the front panel is pretty clean. The cases aren't bad. There is, um, may not be obvious in the video here, there's some scuffing along the top of the front panel. But other than that, for a 40-year-old radio, it's not too bad. I'll just quickly turn it to its side. It's very, very heavy, this transceiver, by the way. It's the heaviest HF rig I've ever come across. You've got a plain um, side panel here. On the other side, we've got a carry handle. And um, yeah, you need to have some confidence in that handle, given the weight of the radio. And uh, we'll just now have a look at the uh, rear panel. Okay, so on the rear panel of the radio, um, I've just zoomed in a little bit so we can get a better look. Uh, we've got the SO239 socket here, ground leg. We've got two RCA connectors. Well, in fact, we've got three RCA connectors. The top two are to do with a receive antenna. You can either feed a separate receive antenna into the radio, or you can use this socket to feed a signal from this antenna that's fed into the radio out to a separate receiver. We've got an RF out a jack here, which I believe is for use with um, a transverter. So you get a low level um, of RF coming out of there. We'll just have a look at the other um, uh, sockets and outputs. Right, so we have here, I think it, this socket um, can be used to connect to um, a 12 volt supply. And uh, this dummy plug uh, sits in there when it's not in use. Um, we have the AC input, like a typical kettle lead uh, socket here for, uh, for your AC in. Okay, so um, rear panel, we've got uh, above the kettle lead, the AC input, we've got two DINs, labeled accessory one and accessory two. Various functions uh, for those, including the connection of a linear amplifier. Two key jacks, uh, one, for a key, yeah, for one for a Kia, if the Kia board is fitted in the radio. I don't know whether it's in this radio. The other, I think, for a straight key. We've got a memory uh, backup switch. Doesn't seem to have any effect in this radio. Uh, maybe because the battery has, has long gone, or maybe the board, which I think was an option, isn't fitted. And then we've got this little um, connector panel uh, here. Uh, for we've got AF out, PTT, auxiliary, FSK, phone patch, and tone, and external speaker, A trip. Don't know what that is. And IF out. I'm interested in the IF out, and I'm wondering if there's a signal on there that could be fed into um, an SDR receiver. Um, that would be uh, interesting. I've had a look at the manual for this radio, and it's not that clear. So maybe I need to look into it a little bit more deeply. So next we'll um, see the radio in operation. I'll see if I can squeeze it into the shack. Uh, before we set it into a place in the shack, I'm going to put it on a dummy load. And we'll see what sort of power it uh, puts out. And we'll see uh, which frequencies it transmits on. Because this radio is general coverage. General coverage receive. It's kind of capable of general coverage transmit as well. Um, if it has been opened up, that'll be good because it'll mean we can use 60 meters and we can use the full 40 meters band. If it hasn't and it's in its original configuration, it may well be that we can't transmit on part of 40 meters because the band was extended some years ago and it would certainly mean that we wouldn't be able to transmit on 60 meters. So we'll have a look at things like that as well.